Uh, we'll talk about ESG in just a bit, but a lot of people are just want to get a sense of how your business is doing. Give us an update, what's doing well and what isn't doing too well. So, um, uh, there's the, domestically, the economy is, um, uh, the stock market is doing okay, but I guess if you look at the day-to-day -day economy, um, just like the rest of the world, it's, it's still it's struggling. Um, our operations abroad, as you can see from our U.S. peers that have done quite well in their trading and fixed income, we can say that pretty much the same. Mm. So um, we're, we're not doing great, but I think we're quite strong and um, weathering the current situation quite well. Uh, yeah, I mean, do you expect deal activity, especially in Japan? And I, I, you know, I, I'm also aware that Daiwa itself has filed to raise money in the debt markets. Do you expect both equity and, and debt financing and the activity within those two spaces to continue to pick up in, in the second half? Um, I, I do. I think um, we will see more about um, how the companies are faring with the current situation as we go along, and that will affect how people... Uh, the equity market, but I think um, in terms of raising funds, uh, the interest rate environment, the central banks are supporting the market, so I think it will remain quite strong. Yeah, Keiko, uh, Kuroda, of course, this week saying that the economy has passed its worst. Uh, is he right, given the, the virus situation in Tokyo, uh, and is there more, do you think, that the central bank needs to be doing? So, so I think this is my personal opinion, but I think we still haven't um, seen the worst because the numbers in Tokyo are still um, going the wrong way. Uh, so, but, and I think um, the central bank, I don't, I think if they maintain their current stance, that itself is a strong message that, um, that, that will encourage us. So I'm not very concerned about um, the central bank not doing anything more. Um, I think they're doing quite, quite, um, they're, they're enhancing what they're saying right now. And when you look at global markets, are there areas, uh, pockets of opportunity uh, that you're attracted by at this point? Um, I think, yes, I think the M&A market is going to be, it's a bit slow now, but there's lots of reasons why it could become more active um, in a positive way. So that's an area that we're, um, that's an area that we're actually quite strong in. So that's encouraging for, for us as well. And ha has the pandemic changed we're also any in of the your process plans, say, of, um, into the... Of, the, the uh, I was going to ask, actually, into the end of into 2021, the, sorry, did you say the has this part pandemic... Again? Right. Uh -huh. so, so what I was going to ask mm -hmm. is, obviously, we're in a pandemic, and some of the banks that we've spoken to here have put some of their uh -huh. expansion plans on hold. I'm wondering, if is that the case for Daiwa, um, whether that's yeah. your business in Japan or in China, for example, where you told us last time you're looking mm -hmm. to maybe start operations at some point this year? So the plans remain the same. We're still we're talking to the authorities. We're hopeful that we will start the op joint venture operations by the um, end of this year, which is the same thing that I, I so told you uh, last time. And also domestically, um, we have started opening small, small branches. Um, that's been our policy for the last few years, and we're still maintaining that. So we are announcing um, op opening of these branches. That hasn't changed. So, so to answer your okay, question, um, we haven't really changed policy because of the pandemic. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of the pandemic, then, ESGs, you know, I know you guys are very, very big and socially yeah. responsible investing. I'm going to bring in the, a globally relevant mm -hmm. topic, obviously, right now, which is mm -hmm. the pandemic. The concept of vaccine bonds, yeah. you guys have been issuing that way mm -hmm. before all of this yeah. happened. Give us an update there. And what are the opportunities for you guys when it comes mm -hmm. to that specific security? So the vaccine bonds, um, uh, which was done by Gavi and IFIM, are, is, are relevant now more than ever, and I think they'll have a big role to play. And obviously, we, we're talking um, to them about what, how we can do and how we can raise funds in Japan. Of course, uh, raising funds is, is, real, is a market-oriented um, operation, so it really depends on the market, whether we can bring the bonds to Japan 
um, to and reintroduce them to our investors here. But in the meanwhile, um, uh, the institutional investors are very keen to invest, and we've been able to bring some life insurance companies to invest in uh, coronavirus bonds. And I think there'll be more to follow. Right, it's a new product. Could you tell us just very quickly what are vaccine bonds specifically? So vaccine bonds that we issued are bonds. Um, so so if in uh, Gavi, um, there's countries that uh, pledge multi-year financing up to 20 years, um, but they will invest up to 20 years. So, but we need the vaccines now. So we issue bonds that. Um, whose uh, interest payments are paid by the pledges that countries have pledged for 20 years. So it's, it's a very multinational, multinational multi-year operation, which is, um, and the output is a single bond that people can invest in. And we're hoping that it could be uh, not just vaccines, but I, I've heard that they're working on education bonds as well with the same scheme. There's a vibrant debate going on in the U.S., and other Western nations about the lack of racial diversity mm -hmm. in the financial sector. Uh, to what extent is that debate yes. taking place in the yeah. boardrooms of Japanese financial firms and how much more needs to be done to address some of these issues? So, uh, so diversity is a big issue in Japan. I think not in the same way as maybe in the US or in Europe because right now diversity in Japan means pretty much um, woman in the boardroom, um, which is a big topic. Uh, and, uh, but so, because of, as you mentioned, the investors are very keen to see more diversity in the boardroom, uh, there, there has been some progress. For If you look at Zaiwa, we were just talking a few minutes ago, the percentage is 23% right now, so we're much better than average. But our management thinks um, there's a lot of room to improve. I think there's an uh, improvement in terms of putting international representation on the board, too, in Japan right now. Uh, so, so the debate is very uh, different what about, from what, what about we're seeing gender... in the U.S. and in Europe. Because, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, gender diversity, I wanted to bring that gender. up. Gender, uh, yeah. Apologies for interrupting. Yeah, because okay, I would sure. imagine in, in the case of Japan yeah. as well, because of, I guess, how peculiar the market works as well, some quirks, let's put it that way, uh, you, you know, you, you don't have a very big labor force. It's mm -hmm. shrinking every year. So I would imagine that mandate to just bring more yeah. females into the workforce is more urgent than in any other place yeah. on the planet. I'm curious why it's not happening quicker in Japan. Yeah. So I think that's exactly the point. The reason why they want women is because of they, they provide labor. It's not because of the diversity they bring, which is the more important part. And I, I'm concerned that we haven't really gotten to that point that diversity is good for the company. It's not just as a labor force. And I think that's what's making it more difficult to bring more women into the workforce.